world go, goes to another very 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 rocking edition to the hookup on music podcast cannot believe we are already here at episode 13 and again we are rocking as always on the penguin sadistic studios youtube channel so thank you thank you very much this will also also be on um, apple and spotify but uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I do really appreciate it. As always, have a really, really, really awesome guest in a couple seconds here I'm going to bring out. It's going to be a, a really, really, really good time. Um, but before we bring out our guest this week, what I wanted to do was to kind of uh, go through a couple um, albums that were released just, um, well, just today or you well if you're listening uh it was actually yesterday okay so these albums were released on the 28th these are just a couple albums wanted to kind of go through real quick um wanted to start with a kind of a, a metal album well not kind of a metal album it is a metal album it's by a band called enforced and the name of the album is called war remains saw some people online talking about this album so i decided to jump right in it was really 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 awesome really really heavy this is the band's third album um from all indications reading a lot of things a lot of people seem to enjoy this album by this band um the name of the album is called war remains and there's 10 songs okay so again you know doesn't take up a lot of your time um definitely really worth the price of admission when it comes down to it for for that um another album that was released is um the new album by the national okay first two pages of frankenstein you know for a while um i had been hearing tropical morning news on the radio but now it was really fresh and nice to hear the rest of the album 11 tracks okay really 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 good stuff another really really good band always putting together solid songs matt berenger is an excellent vocalist lyricist also, um, and everything else along that, but really a good, good album. Um, there's some collaborators that join in, in on this soup, Jan Stevens, Phoebe Bridgers, really, really, really good stuff. Really, really worth checking into. Um, another really awesome, um, song is the Foo Fighters are back. They're back, going to be back with a brand new, um, album called but here we are going to be released a little bit later in the year but uh before they have decided to release this album because this album is not coming out till june 2nd they decided to put out this brand new track rescued this past week and it sounds like the foo fighters it's rocking it gives you a little bit of insight into a little bit of 
feelings of what the band's going through. Really, really, really good. Definitely worth checking out if you like the Foo Fighters. Um, also been going back a little bit since the new Metallica release and going through some of those less liked Metallica albums like Load and Reload and kind of digging through those a little bit, trying to find some some goodness. And there is always goodness in lots of albums that you personally may not enjoy anymore. So definitely, definitely, definitely check those out. But uh, here we are. And here I am about to bring out my guest. So please, everybody, um, enjoy. Here he is, BZ. BZ, how's it going, my man? It's going good, Tony, man. How are you? Doing good, doing good. Um, This is actually 100 times better than our very first podcast that we did together because way back then, you know, it was, we had, I think on that episode, I was just telling my wife, there was like six of us. It felt like a train tonight. This is literally, we're going to rock. We're going to break down five classic albums. And I really appreciate you being here, my man. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you for, uh, thank you for having me. This was, uh, this is very cool. No problem. Um, to be fair, you were the, when I started this, you were the very, very first person to reach out to me and tell <laughs> me that you thought this was an awesome idea. And honestly, I've been for, we're on episode 13 tonight. I've been scratching at the bit to get you on here, man. So thank you so much. I appreciate that, man. I've always liked your content. Hey, you know, one thing and two, I'm still pissed off that uh, over the summer, I'll never forget, I was at the park with my daughter and you were like, got this extra Rage Against the Machine ticket. And I was like, I literally looked at the sky and i said man why can't i get out of what i gotta do tonight to make it to this concert because man that would have been awesome but for sure we're here to rock tonight and uh to get started i wanted to ask you uh what's some of the most recent stuff you've been listening to um a ton man i mean i've i've been revisiting some old stuff um not too much new but um, there's, there's a, a couple, a handful of things that, um, that I'm, I'm digging right now from, from the archives, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> there is a Twitch streamer I follow who does some really interesting things. I'll tell you about it, um, in more detail some other time, but, um, the, uh, the Portis head song, which had a really cool video for the song only you, yeah, oh, if yeah. you remember that. And uh, that's kind of what this Twitch streamer does is post videos like that of songs, music videos, clips. I mean, there, there's a whole bunch of content that they put up there, but totally forgot about that song. Totally forgot about that weird video. Um, so I've been digging that song. Um, I don't know if you remember the band Super Chunk from the oh, 90s. I remember Super Chunk. Oh, yeah. Nice. I remember. Uh, I mean, one of my main things was on Sunday night's not not supposed to be staying up but staying up late and watching 120 minutes on mtv and they would play a lot of that cool more underground alternative like super chunk and stuff like that i mean it's been a while so now that you brought them up i'm definitely going to uh should go back and check that stuff out yeah in indoor living is the album that i've been um digging right now there's a couple there's a song called martinis on the roof and under our foot that um that i've been digging right now the one song, Random as Heck, is uh, Big Empty by Stone Temple Pilots. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. To me, that's their best song. Uh, the highs and lows of the guitars coming in and out. Uh, the movie, obviously, The Crow is where it was from. Awesome movie. Um, and yeah, that, uh, that, that song somehow got back into the rotation. I don't know how. I don't know how some of these songs come back into the rotation sometimes. It's so random, but I kind of love it. Um, and jumping from genre to genre is just always keeps things kind of fresh because you know your, your playlist, your liked songs on Spotify or whatever streaming service you use can, be, can get stale sometimes. And then I'm with uh, you. And, uh, uh, Vaseline has, for some reason, made it um, from the same album, has made it into my, the guitar riff. I think I heard it recently. And man, Stone Temple Pilots, they got they got some, especially, I like the second album. Got a lot of good, diverse jams. Um, Big Empty, of course. Great, great track. For sure. Um, even Interstate Love Song, the guitar on that song. Um, yeah. When it first came out, I was kind of, it wasn't 
I was more into the heavier. But as you stated a l- just a minute ago, the, I love switching genres. I could go, I can yeah. go, you know, funk, heavy, and I could just keep switching it up because it what keeps it fresh. For sure, for sure. And then, um, man, I, I mean, I could go on, but um, they put Dr. Dre, The Chronic, on Spotify. I know uh, Dre was kind of having a thing about streaming music and you know he's been back and forth in that kind of realm about what he puts out there but that full album is back on spotify i nice. visited that one uh there's another band and you know just kind of going along i i i could probably write a whole essay about the parallels of hard rock music and rap music just kind of the the feelings of despair and hopelessness and all those things in the lyrics kind of ring true across those genres. Yeah. Uh, kind of an interesting thing, but there's this band, <laughs> there's this band. Um, I don't know how I came across them, but uh, the band name is, and uh, you know, don't cancel me is perfect. Perfect pussy. Perfect. <laughs> hey, Hey, yeah. we're here. We're here to talk about all kinds of music. <laughs> uh, put that one down on your charts, people. I like that. <laughs> They've got a song called, um, there's an album called Say Yes to Love, which is, of course, tongue in cheek because, you know, punk music isn't, uh, this is, uh, this isn't really about love. Mm. Song called Bells, a song called Driver. Uh, they're a band that broke up. They're out of Syracuse, New York. Um, but a female lead singer, I, her name escapes me right now. There's someone new who I just, uh, found out. But yeah, just if you like that hard rock screaming, uh, punk Zach De La Rocha kind of uh, front person of a band. This is right up your alley. A lot of people who listen to the show, I'm sure, are definitely going to check that out. If nothing more, based on the name alone, that's enough for you. That's enough to be like, yeah, you know, you know. And that's you know, back in the day, I remember there was the one band they were called Nashville Pussy, and it's like, oh look, they're on the bill, Nashville. You know, and it like, oh, it, hey, awesome name. I, I dig it <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Memorable for sure. But uh, thank you for uh, those are really I actually had written down every single one of them, especially the last one seven times. So um, <laughs> this, this is um, but I had asked you which um, to get started. I think this is something I want to do a little bit more is just kind of pick five albums and we'll kind of dig through them. So you picked these five. And what's ironic is I've owned all five. So it was not I didn't have to do any research. It was literally just put the slides together and get ready to rock. The very first one you picked um, comes from 1979, and that is The Wall. Great pick, man. The Wall, I mean, of course, one of the greatest rock albums, I think, of, well, of all time. Yeah, I mean, I agree. Roger Waters is a creative genius. I I discovered this album, like, my freshman year of high school. This isn't really the type of music that, um, you know, I would get uh, influ- that came from, like, a parental influence. This is something that, you know, like a friend showed me. I don't even remember who it was, but um, I was immediately hooked. I was immediately hooked on Pink Floyd, dived into the lyrics. I loved, you know, when you're 14, I don't even really know. I don't know what a concept album is. I'm like, cool. This is a a story straight through double CD, 1979. And I remember my mom being like, this was popular music when I was young. And I'm like, (laughs) well, it still still holds up, Ma. Uh, I mean, shoot, you know, 20, 25 years later um, from, you know, freshman year of high school, it still, still holds up. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And, and actually, uh, Roger Waters at Tinley Park, when it was still called the World Music Amphitheater, was my first concert ever. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, it that's was. Really um, it was it was it was an experience for sure. Um, and then I saw the wall at United Center in like 2010 ish mm. um, when he was on that tour. Um, and yeah, I've. Uh, I love their whole catalog. I love this album for um, a lot of reasons. 
but yeah, um, you you can't go wrong on this one. There are no skips for me. I mean, the album is loaded. I mean, you got, <clears throat> of course, you've got what twenty six tracks here, mm -hmm. and <laughs> yesterday, and I there has never been a time. I also, I I'm forty years old, and I believe I also. I think it was either freshman year or eighth grade year. I also went to the Circuit City in Calumet City. And um, my mom bought me this 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 CD or whatever, and there isn't a day that goes by that I don't blast Young Lust. It's one of my favorite songs. The guitar on that song and the lyrics. Oh yeah, I, I have never got to. So that's very awesome. You got to see Roger Waters. That is somebody I have not got to see. But at Tinley Park, I did go to uh, the Pink Floyd Laser Light Show, and um, when they I'll never forget when they played Young Lust, they had like these big giant light up girl legs that were like walking across yes. the stage and i thought it was honestly one of the coolest things i i had seen at the time um yes. but awesome. that being said the album is is loaded with and you're right i didn't know at that time what a concept album was i just knew what a double album was and i was like wow <laughs> two cd this is great yeah almost two for the price of one but yeah Ooh. i mean uh you know it, it's it's interesting that you know they they bring in stuff like another brick in the wall one part two part three um i i love that they go back to those themes and insert them you know where they make sense uh in the first disc to to tell the story that he's trying to tell um <clears throat> and there's you know there's a, a a song that didn't make the final cut of this album called when the tigers break free um, also a very cool song. I kind of get it why this that one didn't make the cut, but you right. know, also a great song. And it's it's funny when I say a couple of things there because the final cut was their next album and their last album before they broke up. And Waters wanted the final cut to be Pink Floyd's last album and The Wall to be his first solo album. Oh, okay. so I wonder how his solo career might have been much bigger than it was. Not that it was small by any means. He put out some great solo stuff. He does. Um, but if yeah, um, you know that could have really you know changed the course of of the the history of that band. But um, uh, you know, you and you bring up the light show, and I will say, believe it or not, the Museum of Science and Industry used to have a Pink Floyd laser show on the weekend. Ooh. That would have been cool to go to. Really my cool. buddy and I went to it uh, <laughs> my sophomore year, our sophomore year of high school. That's awesome. I will keep this uh, PG-13 and say that there were some other things going on that we may or may not have ingested that well, caused I mean, us. I, I didn't want to bring up the laser light show from earlier. I was just, <laughs> I was just, I was just talking about it. I was just talking about a concept. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, it makes, I mean. But yeah, but all yeah, of that yeah. was there. All of that was there was mm -hmm. like the the teacher from another brick in the wall and all oh, the I stuff know. like skating on the thin ice. It was really cool, but we had to leave early because things got a little rough. Hey, you know the thing about it is is that uh, Pink Floyd's catalog is is vast. With it, it's eclectic to me. Like each album is different, and we could spend all day talking about well each album because there one I've. It's where I kind of got my start too. In the middle of listening to like Tool and some of the more heavy stuff, I was always listening to Pink Floyd and Led Zeppelin and some of that stuff too. Um, Me too. You know, but it's going, I've always, what I've learned, especially recently, it's some of the deep cuts that never got played, you know, on the radio too, that are really good. As you stated, the theme going through it all, the, the multiple, um, you know, another bricks in the walls. I've always been a big fan even of, the the lead ins into another brick in the wall part two like the happiest days of our lives like yeah it's kind of the start of like the interludes that you'll see later kind of like when we talk about tool and stuff well it's a it's a interesting thing you say there because i was also a led zeppelin guy also a tool guy pink floyd pink floyd and tool kind of bleed in together to me i almost feel like uh, Tool is like the Pink Floyd of our generation in some ways. We used to have that uh, conversation quite a lot in um, in high school. I would sit around and that was, you know, that was what it was said. Tool reminded us a lot of Pink Floyd, like Pink Floyd. Yep. Uh, a lot of the themes from their music, the lyrics, 
um, the, you know, pushing the boundaries a little bit and what you can do within metal um, was kind of their thing. And, and they got big from that, really, because at that time it was like, record companies were like okay seattle music sign every band that science sounds remotely close to pearl jam and nirvana because they might be the next big thing and tool kind of got lumped into that but they really weren't part of the seattle sound they were a band from la that was playing hard rock so on the surface it sounds similar but when you dive into it um they do some really intricate things with well, yeah i mean not only vocally but lyrically when you're when you're 11 years old and you're watching Headbangers Ball and they play a song called Prison Sex and you're like wow you know this is different and this is claymation and they're not putting themselves as a band out there it, it kind of changed my perspective and um, <clears throat> I think it was in '97 I got to see a Tinley Park Lollapalooza and oh. they and they headlined it was right after Enema and back then I'll be honest with you all my friends were more they like corn. I liked corn too. I liked a lot of that stuff. Same. But my tool, that Enema CD, it just stuck with me for some reason. Um, there was something deeper to it. I don't want to say there was something smarter, but it was something that was more a little bit like Pink Floyd. It was something right. more going on, which now you look back, you know, there was a lot going on. There was. I mean, that was kind of a, they caught some influence from Pink Floyd. The band members have said that and, Anima's a, a concept album. So is Lateralis. So is 10,000 Days. The new one, maybe not as much, but no. um, yeah, I mean, that, uh, that was right up my alley. Well, you just brought it up. Lateralis, which was your second pick, which, you know, right here is a clip from one of the songs. Another great, excellent pick, Tootle, Tool Lateralis from 2001. Very awesome. Yeah, I, I remember, you know, Anima came out and, you know, there's always huge gaps between their albums. And I was coming home from work in high school, maybe junior year. I'm not 100% sure. And it was like Q101, new Tool song. And it was um, Schism. Yep. And I'm like, oh, shit, let me hear this. And it wasn't long after a Perfect Circles first album came out, so um, you know it was. I was looking forward to more Tool uh, content or songs, I should say. And uh, straight through that one's a banger. I mean, the clip you just played, "Ticks and Leeches," was, oh, yeah. um, you know, a, a legendary metal song in my opinion. Uh, their lead singer Maynard blew out his voice from <laughs> doing that one, screaming the entire track. Yeah, I mean, that song um, was heavy. And he pretty much said, we, uh, I, I can't, you know, people were like, well, I, you know, play that live. And he's like, I can't like my yeah. vocal, my vocal cords are, are my bread and butter. If I blow these out, I could be done. Um, cool artwork on the album too. You know what I mean? The artwork, I the little sleeve that you, I still have it out here. The, the original CD that I bought way back. What's funny listening to you is at that same same time period, I remember what I did the first time I heard it, which is cool. Is like, this is the start of like the internet, you know, in college, and they would what they did was release one five second little clip, and it was just like, but it do do but it do do do, and I was like, I just listened to that clip, and I was like, what is this gonna sound like? This right. is gonna be so cool, and honestly, um, really, really big album. You know what I mean? I think it takes a right. step up from, you know, the the last album, Anima, and I think you know it's it's very very expansive. The, you know, the Grudge, you know, into you know the Patient is very those two songs. I've always been a huge fan. I mean, the whole album, great. Yeah, yeah. You you can't. I mean, another one to me that has no skips. Uh, the Grudge is up there with. You know, top ten album openers of all time for me. That song is uh, is pretty intense. And then you got um, you got the parallels with Pink Floyd once again. Uh, Anima was kind of their metal, where they were kind of experimenting with going in a different direction away from like the hardcore 
90s grungeish kind of music into their own artistic progression and they got here and they kind of nailed it with a concept album is it the wall i don't know that's a discussion for another day but but as far as like i mean this came out in 2001 um it, it's no, nobody was doing what they were doing there there weren't many you know if any metal bands or hard rock bands or anything anyone doing what they were doing it's it's i've i've stood on many different arguments with the band um with people especially on the hard rock heavy side and it always leads to you know a lot of people for me i'm i could tell you 20 long so i love a long song fan i love long songs i always have i love when bands can get down and jam because it shows their intricacies and tool is you know and honestly the newest album it is grown on me it, it started where it was like oh it's, it's all right but it has been to the point where like it is like almost like grown into my head some of those jams on there because what i'm looking at is a more mature band so i'm listening to more mature riffs and they're different right. like you said undertow is a complete difference than this not and both of them i like them um maynard has always been one of my favorite vocalists a guy could hit notes just just his voice, perfect circle, you know. Um, right. That's a great. That's a great album too. You know, Mir de Norms, even the second out. They're all. I've always enjoyed everything he's pretty much been a part of. For sure. Yeah. This is um, this this one is is an album that I that always gets spins for me. I always go back to this one. Um, you know, uh, the title track, the grudge we already talked about. The Patient. title track. I think it's around. It's like it's like around seven minutes it almost sounds like a spaceship like takes off into your ears when the bass it's like woo, it, i love i love the title track probably my favorite song on the album i don't even know i'm talking about all these other songs i totally forgot about the title track it's probably my favorite yeah it's uh it's pretty incredible and then you got the last thing where you know tool does their thing when they throw something random out there for you like some guy calling into uh, police or 911 about being abducted from aliens. Uh, you know, the whole thing was a hoax, but, you know, this was really before the internet existed as we knew it today. So you listen to these things and, you know, the band is not in the videos. The band is not um, on the album. And yeah. it was, you know, there was, there's that mystery that's gone. Like, you know, the seventies, uh, the sixties, all that music was, you know, mysterious, and these guys kept that going, um, which was which was always cool. I definitely, definitely, definitely agree. Um, the next album that you picked here, well, this this album, of course, classic from from front to back. To me, close to a ten. I mean, ten out of. I mean, it is a ten out of ten and more. Uh, excellent pick, Rage Against the Machine's debut album. Yeah, uh, another, you know, bomb track to start it off. That is another opening track of an album that is up there for me, top 10. This is the album that introduced me to the band. Um, me too. And, you know, I kept going through it. I know obviously Zach is a lot more political than some of the other bands we've already talked about. All their lyrics are, per, per, uh, excuse me, political. Obviously, Rage Against the Machine is is the name of the uh the band there even though some people uh for seem to forget that sometimes but yeah i mean this is this is a banger straight through for me this you know is another one where uh, you know you get this album as a kid and you look at the cover and again there's no pictures of the band there's a picture of you know the buddhist protest uh when the guy lit himself on fire um you don't, you, you know, you get a lot of different sounds. Again, another band that did stuff that nobody else was doing at the time and nobody else could really ever replicate. So, and it was really cool. And you, you always, you know, it, it, at least a lot of people have told me like, oh, so does it, you know, is there like uh, multiple DJs and all this other, you know, stuff going on? Like, no, this is a bass guitar, a guitar, drummer, and a vocalist. That's it. That is, that is, it is, it is. And that's why I've likened a lot of, I mean, when those, if you sometimes mute Zach and you just listen to the, the music, 
it's it's that it's zeppelin-esque the guitars are loud the drums are really heavy the bass can carry it and this album i mean um i'll never forget when this video was the first video that i that that's playing i mean at that moment i think it was like metallica but i also had heard faith no more at this point so i was kind of like okay i i you know the rapping and the stuff but man they were I'll never forget. I think it was my sixth or sixth grade, seventh grade birthday party. Uh, someone in my buddies bought it, the CD, and in my basement we did a mosh pit down there, like seven of us just jumping around. Um, but back to Tool, it was a lot of the connection between both of those bands that I really enjoyed. You know, you got Maynard singing on this album. You yep. know, I know your enemy. Yep. And then you got you know Zach singing on Tools. Um, you know, uh, undertow. Yep. And it, it's, I'm pretty sure, I think it was Tom Morello and Adam Jones went to school together in Illinois. And that's yep. why when I, uh, those kind of connections is why I like music is because to put that all together and be like, I like both of these bands a lot. They're both very different, but they both are cool with each other. And I always like stuff like that. For sure. And Adam Jones uh, actually taught Tom Morello how to play guitar, but he's always been like, he just got so good so fast, you know, and it's true. And it's interesting because they have, um, you can see the similarities there, they're there, but they're very different too. I mean, obviously all the stuff that Morello does with effects and, you know, distortion pedals and stuff like that. And Adam does the same thing, but he's more of like a shred, um, guitarist that's trying to add textures to the music um to fit you know whatever theme whereas morello's just going off so yeah they they went to high school together uh and then maynard and uh i think i think that's how they met danny carey and formed tool in la always cool oh always super cool stuff um to see your favorite album by them yeah, it's a tough pick um, between this one and and probably Battle of L.A. I love all all three of those albums. Um, you know, Renegades of Funk was a cover album, but that's also great too. Um, I I would have to say it's this one. This is the this is how I this is the one that I discovered the band by. So I'm gonna have to roll with this one. And I've seen them live, and it's one of the best shows I've ever seen. Oh, uh, after a while when. <laughs> I'd make the joke. It wasn't, I mean, I, I would laugh, but I would sing um, track number five uh, when work wasn't going well. And then I'd have to like explain to my wife. It's a, it's, it's just the rage against the machine song because at the end when he's screaming, when he's screaming bullet in my head or whatever, I mean, these songs all got a lot of, you know, they grab you, man. I mean, even fistful of steel was one that I would play quite a lot. And that's a deeper track that, you know, doesn't get as much play as let's say everyone knows, you know, killing in the name of, I mean, that, that's right. the one that, that really put him on the map, but a lot of good tracks. Yeah. There, there isn't a skip on this album. Um, you know, I, I would, I guess I would say settle for nothing is probably my least favorite, but still a good song. Yeah. Love that you said fistful of steel. Cause you know, Tom's got some unique guitar work on that one. Township rebellion is another one that just, you know, it, it just it just goes hard and it rocks. Oh, it does. Um, it does. And only not, 10 tracks, too. I mean, you dig a debut album, 13, 12. I mean, 10 tracks, that's – and solid 10 tracks get you in, rock yep. you, keep moving. Um, Very, very, very awesome, awesome album, which kind of leads into, well, Notorious B.I.G.'s Ready to Die, <laughs> which uh, I, got, I got a little track here. So by your my 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 math, if my math's doing me correctly, did you graduate high school two thousand two? Nailed it. That's exact the exact year. Because when you were and and so I I because I was a freshman when he passed away. I remember it specifically, which would have made you like in seventh or eighth grade. Yeah, and I always remember that. I mean, at that moment, I was more definitely into the heavy stuff. Same. But as you stated the same, when you're watching MTV and you're watching these songs intertwine with the heavy stuff, it all made sense to me. I was never somebody who was like, turn this crap off. 
it's all metal. <laughs> and that's why I even like to, I'd never engage with anyone in a negative music conversation because the reality is, is I've done that a lot and not against Biggie, but other artists that I end up coming back liking because for sure deep, deeper in, but uh great, great pick here, man. Ready to die. Yeah. I mean, uh, not exactly a concept album per se, but oh. you run through it and, you know, he's telling his story um, about growing up the way he did. Yeah. Um, you know, you played hit, you played, um, uh, you played juicy, which is, yeah. you know, kind of the, the, the hit from this one where, you know, the, I made it song, despite all these other things, warning track five is one that every year is on my Spotify wrapped, um, for the last, like, you know, six or seven years, however long they've been doing Spotify rap. Um, just, you know, the, the lyrics of that song just flow through like a movie. Like you can just watch it. Uh, you know, the, the lyrical play, uh, you know, and coming in and out of those different themes and telling the story just plays out like a movie in my mind. The whole thing about, um, you know, whether it's real or not is kind of up to your own interpretation, but it's things that he's paranoid about, but also, you know, could and maybe might have happened. So, uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, just, it just, just nails it all the way through. Um, it there's does. really not, not a song that you can skip on this one, in my opinion. No, I mean, front to back, um, one day I'll have to show you my, uh, not on this album, but next album, um, I do a really good notorious thugs. You could pick me. I could be either anyone, a bone or biggie and I could do the whole thing. Um, but uh, this album, all the way through, really, really good. Um, I like the second half quite a lot. Um, Big Papa was the first video I think I saw and pretty much got introduced to everything. And those lyrics are amazing in that song. Um, yeah. And he just, like you said, good story. And then you go back and you really read into his life. And then you go back and listen to the album and it put it all together. I think that's what makes it a really good classic. Agreed. Um, he he tells his story. He's got some great, like, just turn this up all the way kind of songs that you can nod your head to. Um, he he didn't miss. It's, you know, obviously unfortunate that we didn't get to see what, you know, his artistic progression would have been. But well, you, you look you, back at songs like The What with um, with Method Man, that song is incredible. Ready to Die, the title track, another incredible song. Um, I can't imagine what a, I would love to have been, you know, take a time machine go and go back to one of these concerts and see what that kind of energy was like back then. Um, the video clips alone are, are uh, enough to make you want that. But yeah, it's uh, again, you go back to metal and, and rap and this is a dark album. Um, you know, you have su suicidal thoughts. You've got um, That's a dark song. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, and some others there too that, you know, kind of uh, you know I could draw parallels to and some of the other stuff we discussed. You know, um, again, you know, when you got Puffy, executive producer, you know, album comes out in 1994. Again, really, really excellent, excellent pick, um, which leads into our, our our final album that we have here, which we put I put a poll together yesterday, and after everyone voted. The pick out of all these albums that everyone picked as their favorite was Nine Inch Nails, The Downward Spiral. So before uh, we get started, um, I'm going to make this a little bit more of a, a rated R show here really quick here. And um, I'll remember my senior year of high school, um, a bunch of us skipped going to prom and instead we went to a, a special club and there were dancers and stuff. And I'll never forget, we went and sat in the front for, for a dance and a girl comes out and she's got a boa constrictor around her neck. <laughs> and she plays three songs. She plays Pantera, Second Skin, 
she I forgot what the third one was, and then she plays this. And when when she plays this, she asked me to stand up, and I'll never forget. She stands from the rafters with the snake around her, and she wraps her legs around my head. <laughs> and this song is just blasting. Now this is like nineteen two thousand. So like for twenty two years, every time I hear this song, I think back to this night and this album front to back. Man, you talk about a really awesome album. Probably yeah. my favorite of the bunch. Not that they're all great, but this album is very special, very awesome. Agreed. Uh, and, you know, you and I in the past have talked about movies that we saw when we were way too young. Yeah. This is one of those that, you know, you listen to now when you're older and maybe you didn't catch some of the themes when it came out because I was like, you know, 11 years old or something like yeah. that. But oh, no. um, some some pretty heavy things in there. Again, another another concept album or you know some a uh, uh, loosely a concept album so i i always get drawn back to those albums that kind of tell a story straight through this is one of them love that you played reptile oh, yeah. and if you got to dance to that one it's kind of a longer song so yeah, that, that you're getting your money's worth yeah well what it was was it wasn't even a personal dance it was one of those where she's just in the main on the main stage oh, okay. and we were all in the seats and she's just like stand up and then like all my buddies around me and i'll never forget i had like these shades on so it looked like a movie and i just had a big smile on my face but uh, those deeper tracks in the album are my favorite uh heresy was the first song i heard because my cousin at a birthday party was blasting it from his room and then you go back and of course march of pigs um closer was something that i heard it was actually like a little bit after I had already had the album then. So it wasn't like Closer was the song. Um, their little EP before this broken with Wish. Wish was my first song that I heard by Nine Inch Nails. So kind of was a little introduced to them, but they recorded this album. I don't know if you know this, but they recorded this album in um, unfortunate. Well, it's not really a good thing, but in unfortunately the house that Charles Manson did his not nice things in, which is what wow. leads to a lot of the creepiness the whole album is just really dark and really creepy. Yeah. And he admits he was on a downward spiral when he was making this album, which you could hear it. Yeah. You have to assume that he kind of is um, for, for, you know, what, what you hear on the album, musically, lyrically, you've got to assume, I mean, the, the last song hurt is, you know, more or less he kill he commits suicide. That's mm -hmm. how the story ends. But yeah, I mean, you started off with Mr. Self-Destruct. Um, I mean, all all these, you know, a lot of these albums have just, to me, banger openers. Um, I love a good banger opener. Mr. Self-Destruct, Piggy, Heresy, oh, Piggy. Oh, yeah. March, March of the Pigs, Closer. I mean, that run right there in that album is insane. Um, <clears throat> uh, and then, you know, you've got some stuff where they do kind of their... Um, you know, reptile again, uh, deep cut. A war was it a warm place? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, some some really interesting stuff. Um, you know, you another one that opened uh, opened my eyes up to the world of possibilities with music. Um, you know, industrial rock. I think is what they uh, what we used to call it back in the day. <laughs> Nine Inch Nails, KMFDM. Yep. A um, couple others that I'm probably forgetting right now. Um, but yeah, I remember Q101 used to have like a late night industrial rock thing uh, oh, yep. the week on the weekends or maybe something like that. But yeah, um, again, dark album. But it, you know, if if you like the wall, if you like Lateralis, um, you know, this one, this one's right up your alley too. If you if you've never heard it, obviously you've heard it. But if any of your listeners haven't, this is one to go through. If you like the other ones we've discussed. I saw these guys at Lollapalooza um, in like 2013, and they rocked. Trent still sounded great. Um, just A plus all around. Um, I'll have to. Uh, it was in college, like right in college at some point. A buddy of mine's um, dad worked security at us, the stadium in Evansville, Indiana, and they came there. And me and him went, and it kind of sounds a little bit like the story that you were telling about the science and industry, yeah. where it got a little bit crazy while we were watching it, if you know what I mean. And then we'll, we'll talk about that later. But uh, they put on a show, man. Um, I went and visited a buddy even in California once, and we went and seen him 
out there with Jane's addiction. Um, what I like about Trent is he is he is he is matured. Like you could see, like he's a really awesome musician. Like he was not like Tool. He not a not just a flash in the pan. Like a good music, a really good musician. Yeah, just a just a great artist. Um, you know that the cover work of the album, the music videos. Uh, the lyrics, the the composition of everything is is thought and detail uh, to the max put into a lot of this stuff. Uh, and and you look back at their kind of progression of Pretty Hate Machine. I'm not sure if that was the album that came before this, or if there was one in between. Uh, they, it was it would that was their actual full album. Um, the thing that I was talking about with Wish, it had like four or five songs. So officially, this was like their second full length album. So yes, Pretty Hate Machine was. And there's a big, you could hear the sound departure between this and Pretty Hate Machine. Totally. And you can see the, uh, the where the progression is either, is as well. Like, there's there's nothing forced there. And Wish is a great song. I don't remember any other songs on that album, but, you know, when that no. song kicks in, it's... Yeah, there's it's, only, it, it, it was something, it was like, this one is where you really start to... I like the next album, too, The Fragile. That's pretty good. With Teeth is pretty good, too. Yeah. Um, but uh they had that song on the natural born killers soundtrack burn that's a good song I remember remember being on the plane with my brother going to my bachelor party in vegas and i was listening to burn like full blast next to him and he's just like well, we have different musical tastes and he's just like dude what are you listening to that sounds crazy and i'm like well yeah that's what i love i always love when also when everyone's got like different musical tastes because like what's your Real quick, what's your brother's musical taste? You know, I actually got him into Tool because oh. there was um, kind of one of those like last minute, like I've got tickets, I need someone to go, come with me. He didn't really know much of the music and he's like hooked. He's been a huge fan ever since, but he's all over the map. He likes Tool, but he likes, you know, he likes classic rock. He likes 21 Pilots, kind of on that tangent of music. That's how um, my sister is, and and I had an extra ticket once to Metallica, and she came, and then she left, and she was like, they were actually really good. And I'm like, because they put on a good show, and it, it's, if you're a band that, no matter what, like, what's a band that you just, right off the top of your head, you don't like? Dave Matthews Band? You know, it's hilarious. That's exactly who I was going to use. Okay, listen, I I had met a friend in college who... He was like one of the t first 100 to join the Dave fan club. So when tickets came, he got first three rows no matter what. Wow. He's like, you want to go? And I'm like, okay, first three rows. Dude, those drums and everything was so loud in my face. Maybe I was feeling pretty good too. But I got to be honest, you <laughs> know, um, that's the thing about live music too. When you're just sitting around, it's, it's a little bit different. All these bands we've talked to tonight, as you mentioned, Notorious B.I.G., from some of the videos I've watched of live performances, energy, lots of energy in all these bands. Um, great albums you picked, my man. Thank you. Thank you. I, I want to hear your top five, man, but we're, uh, we're running out of time here. No, you know, my top five, I have, honestly, my top five, if I went off the top of my head, if I said top five albums off the top of my head. See, like, what I am, I'll be honest with you, is like, if me and you are hanging out, my top five will be different than let's say if me and someone else hangs out. So like if we're hanging sure. out, my top, my top five would be, I would go like tool enema. I would definitely go, you know, I also am somebody like when we're hanging out, I'm trying to like expand your musical knowledge too. So like my, my goal always with everything is like, even if you say it sucks, I'd rather have you tell me it sucks <laughs> than you be like, uh, you know, because you like music and I could tell you like music. So, you know, that's a hard question. You, yeah. you, you put me on the hard spot, but I'd go definitely tool enema. I definitely say something like Metallica and justice for all. I Great listen picks. To quite a lot of Metallica. I would go, if we're going in the rap realm, I'm a really big fan of Aquimini, Aquimini from, uh, outcast. Um, if we're going like, Ooh, if we're going like classic rock and trippy and we're going Floyd, my favorite Floyd album is Animals. I love Animals a lot. Pigs, three different ones. I've probably played that song way more than 
a lot of songs. I love the guitar in that song. And to wrap all of this up, I would probably just to, um, you know, say that we had a good time. I would pick something along the lines of, ooh, you got me here. Um, you know what? This is one I always uh, seem to play is I would play. I got like four of them. You're like, I'm like. I, when, when you asked me for my top five, I was like, man, um, you know, I could go so many different ways with this. But with the stuff that you and I have talked about before, I'm like, I know, I know, I know what my top five, my Tony top five are. Well, that's the thing is I, I want you, you know, and if you ever want to come back on, you're always free to come back on. And another five you know what i mean because i know you like lots and lots and lots and lots of music you know and we for could sure. sit, we could sit for hours and talk and talk about music totally. um last one though i will pick is something probably i'm a really big i've always been like something like black sabbath so something like paranoid or masters of reality but also um if i was looking again I like a lot of like Marvin Gaye. I like a lot of Isley Brothers. I like a lot of funk. And I know that there's a lot of stuff that if we were sitting here listening in a room together that you'd be like, all right, man, this is this is pretty, this is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm try to think of some of those songs while also thinking of my list. And the next time we get together, I'll come up with a real proper list. I love it, man. I love to hear it. <laughs> you want to got anything you want to share before we head out? No, no, nothing else. All um, right, my man. I'm all uh, good here. Thank you so much, my man BZ, for joining me. Um, we are always sharing awesome music here at the Hookup on Music. And you could always check us out at the Hookup on Music on the Twitter. You could check me out at the Sugar Baggy on the Twitter. You could check out uh, the Penguin Sadistic at instagram you can check out we got a store with a bunch of different shirts and stuff to buy but until next time with more rock and roll we will see you later thank you so much again my man thanks for having me tony no take problem care. take care let me see if i could i i'm in such rock and roll oh there it is there's the outro that was a really 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 good show um thank you again bz for joining us um a couple things before we head out this evening um, got some shows coming up uh, today, tonight. The show is being released on the 29th. So tonight we have String Cheese Incidents playing at the Riviera. Uh, really awesome band. Seen them before at IU um, back in the about 2004, 2005. Really, really good set. They jam, do some uh, good, really good stuff. If you're out that way, check that out. Uh, Another band that is also playing the United Center, they played last night, they're playing again tonight, uh, Mania, um, really awesome, I saw a really cool turtle that looked uh, really cool online, love turtles, that's my favorite thing, if you could even see back here on the wall, look right up there, there's a turtle, so again, very cool, um, May 2nd, M83, a little bit more of an electronic band. Um, but really quick here, I was noticing on the calendar coming up on May 4th and 5th, Onyx are back with their Back to Fuck Up, um, their reunion tour for a couple dates, 4th and 5th, um, down at Shuba's, I believe. And that's going to be a really good show. And I think it's worth checking out. Onyx, um, Fiddler, if you like Fiddler, another really awesome band. Um I think you should uh, check out their show that will be coming up at the Metro coming up at um, on also May 4th. But again, thank you so much for always, always joining us. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, before we head out here, check out these shirts.
Thank you. And I did go back and check. It wasn't Shuba's. Those Onyx shows are at Martyrs. So please, um, if you like Slam and you like Onyx, check those shows out. Uh, thank you so much. Please, please, please. Thank you for listening. I don't know why I'm pleasing you. Thanking you. And I, I mean, I'm thanking you. But please thank you for listening. Really, really always enjoy when you join me and join my awesome guests like BZ tonight when we dig through these awesome five albums go back and check those five albums out again they are Nine Inch Nails The Downward Spiral Tool Lateralis Rage Against the Machine self-titled The Notorious B.I.G. Ready to uh, Die and of course the very last one which was really really awesome Pink Floyd's The Wall thank you thank you so much And until next time, everybody have a really, really great week.